Today I'm gonna give you my take on supplements. Do we need them? As I've said many times before, I truly believe that contrary to common perception, the most effective way to ensure we get all the nutrients we need is by preparing real, fresh, homemade food following old and established traditional recipes which have been tried and tested over centuries. This eliminates the need to count every nutrient and attempting to supplement what we need by solving the ever increasingly complex puzzle of which supplements do and what study says what. I will also repeat this again. Most studies out there, especially in this field, are inaccurate or plainly wrong, as can be inferred from the lack of replicability or by the unsound use of statistical methods. Additionally, most studies are funded to support evidence in favor of a product, a supplement or a medicine. There is very little funding to scientifically prove the effectiveness of simple common sense solutions or remedies. Luckily though, these solutions have been already tested empirically over generations and were passed on culturally or are simply built into our intuition, which means that listening to our body has to become a more common habit nowadays. So, do we really need supplements? The simple answer in this context is no. But, having said all of this, I know this is not really the answer you were looking for because like everything in life, nothing is just a simple yes or no. So let me add some nuance here. The first argument in favor of supplements is a very generic one. Traditional food preparations and recipes were very much tied to what was seasonal at the farmer's market. And so, for example, winter foods and winter veggies were suited to cope with the cold. Additionally, there was a richer local biodiversity. Now with mass production and distribution of food, we have lost the seasonality and great part of the variety. For example, there are hundreds of varieties of tomatoes or broccoli in nature, but at a modern grocery store, you will only find a few varieties that have been selected because of their increased yield or shelf life. This results in not only a mismatch between food consumed and the seasonal needs, but also a tendency to eat more of the same things. With this view, it could be argued that intelligent supplementation can be beneficial. However, also the opposite can be argued. Yes, we have lost seasonality and variety, but we also have more selection at our disposal. We can find foods that are out of season or out of region all year round, and so we can really ensure we get all the nutrients we need at all times, even if this requires a bit more knowledge. Some additional arguments in favor of supplements usually comes from the fitness community. The first goes something like this. If we are pushing our bodies to perform at their best and beyond the need of an average person, then why not take advantage of science-based supplementation? Surely food cannot beat that. And the second argument is that it is too cumbersome to get everything from food and so supplementation is better than below optimum nutrition. I will address these questions plus I will give you my personal experience with some of the most popular fitness supplements. Number one, the notion that supplementation gives us a more science-based support in our fitness journey is only partially through. This is best explained with an example. Many pre-workouts contain L-citrulline, a precursor to arginine and nitric oxide, which will give you a good pump at the gym and improve endurance. You can of course supplement that. Or you could add a bit of knowledge and learn which foods contain L-citrulline. Watermelon, for example, is very rich in L-citrulline. So why choose watermelon over a supplement? It is less convenient, surely, but is it? Watermelon also hydrates you, gives you energy, and all the minerals which are essential for L-citrulline conversion in your kidneys. So you can get everything from food and more. Also, the convenience argument has its limitation. Firstly, because when your diet is varied, you really don't have to think about supplements, reducing your stress and time spent thinking about supplements. Of course, you need to then put effort into preparing your food, and uh, it seems more convenient not having to. But it can also be argued that it's more convenient to sit on your couch instead of going to the gym. But aren't we trying to be healthy, fit and happy? Food is even more important than working out, so why put less effort in it? Having said all of this, I'm not in favor of effort for the sake of it. I am also a big fan of efficiency. And for this reason, I have experimented myself with some of the most popular supplements over the two decades of my fitness journey. Because Practice can beat theory in many cases. My experience is that the effects of most supplements are not perceptible, apart from a few cases. The number one supplement, readily available, cheap and effective for strength training, 
has to be creatine. I've taken creatine over some periods and noticed increased endurance and strength. I've also noticed benefits of L-carnitine and L-citrulline, which are amino acids, before and during the workout, but only when these were available at my gym's fountain for free. I never felt the need to buy these. Glutamine is also another useful amino acid, especially for recovery and immune strength, but its efficacy is not as apparent as the effect of creatine. Having said this, remember that creatine is already produced by your body and also available in meat, fish and game. And similarly, all the essential and non-essential amino acids are readily available in food. Another popular category of supplement is vitamins. All I have to say is beware of all the chemicals that you ingest. It's okay to drink the occasional effervescent multivitamin. It's a refreshing drink, supplements lots of micronutrients and can give you a boost in the middle of winter when you're feeling poorly. But in my opinion it is mainly a placebo boost. I have taken multivitamins or multivitamins over long periods and felt no difference to my workout regime. Finally, the most popular fitness supplement of all must be protein powder. What is there to say? It's so easy to get protein from food. Meat, eggs and dairy contain the best protein you can get. Of course, you should always get grass-fed, free-range and organic meat and so on. But you don't need to overload on meat. I have meat or fish once a day still not every meal but that's because i work out every day and i want to be sure to support tissue repair a normal lifestyle requires meat officially three four times a week does your body need extra protein supplementation even if you go to the gym a lot strictly speaking no it doesn't protein cannot be stored in your body does it harm to get more protein than you need not really as long as you have a sufficient carbohydrate intake to supply steady energy to your body so a protein shake can be a good snack and can help with the timing of your protein consumption during the day. But beware of bulking agents, sweeteners and other chemicals that you find in protein powders. Most protein in commerce is whey protein. There is whey isolate, concentrate and casein in order of how fast it gets absorbed by your body. These then come in a variety of qualities. To get the best grade you're looking at a rather expensive supplement. If money is no concern and you like the taste then I say go for it. I like to eat yogurt or drink milk or even skier the Icelandic high protein yogurt. It is the same whey protein that you have in the powder but with a lot more benefits especially in yogurt form thanks to the probiotics which are good for your gut. And yes I do enjoy the occasional protein shake but it's more for the taste and the times when I'm on the go and I haven't had the chance to consume enough protein. I travel a lot and this may make it difficult to maintain optimal nutrition and training. It just means going a bit out of your way to get the food you want and to find the gym. After all, I really love working out and I love good food, so the effort is worth it. I feel good and strong despite a hectic schedule and intense workout regime. And this is with or without supplements. So the question is back to you. Do we really need supplements? If you enjoyed this content, please consider supporting me on Patreon, where you can watch all my upcoming videos ad-free. And I do monthly live streams where you can ask any of your questions. Plus, you support me in creating more of this type of content. Thank you so much.